together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, freakazoids and freakazettes alike, I think you know what freaking time it is. It's time to do Frankie's discussion video. My favorite straw hat, probably my favorite character in the entire series. You're gonna find out why in this video, but let's let's pull it back for a second here. I know the question. I know what the thoughts are on everybody's mind is right now. Teching. This Hawaiian shirt is not even close to being as flamboyantly awesome as Frankie's. Why did you choose such a lackluster shirt? This is like something my grandfather would wear to his vacation in the Bahamas or whatever. No, I'm sorry. They didn't have, it was last minute. They didn't have a lot of options in the Hawaiian shirt department. This was the best I could do, okay? Okay. Well, let's start it off right. I have to do it. Come on now, we all know what's coming. It's time to let out a good old-fashioned 100% all-American Japanese super! Okay, all right, all right, I'll be, I'll be fairly, oh, nipple shot. I'll be fairly normal throughout the rest of the video. I just, I just had to get it out there. I mean, come on, guys, it's Frankie we're talking about here. He's the life of the party. He's the energy. He brings it wherever he's at, okay? So uh, I have to do him justice, right? Um, I need to start just by, I need a drink first off. So let's, uh, let's see if I get a good old refreshing Coke. You know, um, it's pretty obvious that, oh shit, can I, there we go. You know, it's pretty obvious that uh, Oda intended Frankie to run on Coca-Cola. I mean, he's like all American, you know, stars and, and red, white, and blue and everything like that. So it's very clear that the soda, I'm sure, in Oda's mind is Coca-Cola, but copyright and all that. Ah, that's good. That's Mexican Coke, by the way. That's none of that American shit because that has high fructose corn syrup. This uses just plain old original sugar. So, duh, I'm going to be even more wired. Um, Frankie needs to be the new mascot of Coca-Cola. Fuck Santa. You know, there needs to be a Coca... I want to see a commercial this Christmas where Santa Claus comes out there, you know. He he does the thing he always does. He pulls up a Coke. He's like, oh, oh, oh it's great. All of a sudden, Frankie bursts in like the freaking Kool-Aid guy. He's like, super! And the weapon's left. And just blows Santa out of the side of the freaking wall. And then as Santa, you know, he falls through the wall he drops the soda frankie grabs that shit pops it into his freaking stomach and he just starts doing a freaking dance and then you know that that that's the christmas commercial i want to see oh man this is getting so off the rails okay i need to talk about why frankie is my favorite character in the story i get asked that so much teching i'm gonna take these off because these keep falling off why why is frankie your favorite it's just such a weird choice you know the reason i think overall why frankie is my favorite straw hat my favorite character in one piece is because he is a weird guy, but you know what? He owns it. Whatever Frankie does, you know, Frankie's walking around. He wants to break out into a spontaneous musical number. He wants to strike a pose in public. Frankie gives zero shits and negative six fucks about anybody in the vicinity that would be embarrassed by that or cringed out by that or disgusted by that or whatever. He don't care. He does what he wants to do. All right, he's walking around. He sees something. He, like, looks in the freaking, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the shop window and he sees, like, a big whole thing of, like, cola and everything. He's like, oh, that's super cool. And he does a random pose in the middle of the freaking town square. He don't care. All right? He has always been a weird guy. I've always been a weird guy. And uh, it's always that thing about society, you know, he's like, he's like, you got to act a certain way, you know, it's not very socially permissible just to do random poses and shit in public. Think you're going to, people are going to look at you kind of weird like that. Um, you know, when I was in school, I would always have that habit. I get really excitable whenever I be, I would think of a video game or a movie or something. and I'd want to act out a scene. You know, that's what I would do a lot. Like, I don't know, when I was a kid, I would see like something on Power Rangers or something and I'd want to act it out at, at like recess or something something and kids would always bully me they'd always make fun of me because i'd be the weird kid you know like you know the star wars kid you know that famous internet you know video a while back with the kid he's he's doing the thing and the doo -doo 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 -doo, and everyone's looking at him like oh such a nerd such a weirdo that was me except nobody filmed me in the process okay that was basically me on the playground i did it with Yu-Gi-Oh. i did it like like all this stuff anything i'd see you know i could never just 
I could never just think about the stuff. I had to express it. And I, I remember all my teachers, even my parents at one point even had to sit me down and say, you know, if you if you want to stop being bullied, you have to stop doing that because that's the reason they're bullying you. And you know what I basically said to that? I said, you know what? Screw it. That's how I am and that's how I'm going to be. And I still did it and I still got bullied and I just ran out that freaking train. That's just what I did. It eventually did stop. I eventually did. Everyone just kind of, oh, well, that's just, that's just math. That's just what he does, whatever. Um, you know, but uh, that, that was me as a kid growing up. And whenever I, obviously One Piece wasn't, well, it was around then, but Frankie hadn't been introduced yet. This was back in like the early 2000s. And I didn't even know about One Piece until like 2005 when the Four Kids dub came out. Um, so eventually when I did end up reading One Piece when I was in high school, I started really like, you know what, Frankie, man, him and me, man, we got like some sort of connection there. You know, he, he owns it. He don't care what people think about himself. He's just doing what he wants to do. He's just being himself, you know, and, uh, he's, he's crazy. He's wicked smart with engineering. So don't just look at, he's a prime example of just like, don't judge a book by his cover. Don't look at this crazy guy wearing a Hawaiian shirt, wearing a freaking speedo and doing like random freaking dance numbers. You look at that. He's like, he's a fucking, he's an idiot. He's a freaking dude. He's like a, a California fried douche nugget, you know, whatever you want to call him, but he's a genius. Okay. He can build things like cyborgs and robots and motorcycles and submarines and, and shit like that that so um yeah he's a very ex he's the idea of like the eccentric genius i guess would be a good way to express frankie's character uh but i just had to get out there because i know people always ask me that like dude teching what's up with you and frankie man well there you go all right so um frankie's backstory ah you know on the on the depressing scale on the the scale of all straw hat backstories that usually result in somebody dying um well to be fair nobody really technically what is confirmed to be dead in Frankie's backstory. Allow me to explain. So Frankie was brought to the Grand Line about 30 years ago, um, you know, before the uh, the events of the story. He was brought there as a child from the South Blue. That's where he originates from. Uh, his parents were apparently both pirates, but we know next to nothing about them. We don't know um, their names. We don't know if they were notorious pirates. We don't know if they're still alive or if they're in the New World or whatever. Probably not very likely that they're ever going to be mentioned, but his parents were pirates. I guess because they were pirates, they weren't really good parents. They didn't really care for Frankie all that much. So, um, I guess they just left him to be orphaned on Water 7. Now, Water 7, back in the day, nowadays, it's this mecca of, uh, of shipwrights and engineering, and there are these huge ship uh, docks that, you know, build uh, giant galleons and shit, and it's a really big force in the One Piece world. Back then, Water 7 was kind of a shithole. It was kind of this backwater place that didn't get a lot of, uh, didn't get a lot of traffic, you know, to get to this island. Uh, and so Frankie grew up there. His, his real name is Cuddy Flam, okay? So he's not Frankie yet. He's just Cuddy Flam. But yeah, that's basically just who Frankie was. Just the weird kid is an orphan wearing a speedo running around town with a blue hairstyle that's basically frankie um eventually he's brought in by tom a fishman and kokoro a mermaid i'm assuming they were they were married at some point i'm assuming that was the case uh and uh they're you know basically tom's adopted sons but also apprentices that was cuddy flam frankie of course and then we have uh, iceberg who is another one of tom's apprentices and frankie and and, and uh, iceberg didn't get along very well growing up they were basically their rivals kind of like a naruto sasuke thing going on there um, but, you know, Iceberg was every bit as a talented as a shipwright as Frankie. It's not like one was incredibly more gifted than the others. The difference, though, was that whereas Iceberg was focused on building ships, you know, just traditional ships and helping out Tom, Frankie was off, once again, doing his own thing, doing the thing he always wanted to do. And Frankie wants to build a battleship that was capable of defeating a Sea King. You know, Frankie probably looks around at these. He lives in the Grand Line, so you see these giant sea serpents coming out of the water every now and then. He's like, man, if if, if we could create something to fight against that thing, that would be super. That would be awesome. That would be a testament to, like, that would be a huge step forward, you know, in engineering and everything if I could figure out a way to take one of those things down. So he bake, he makes a variety of ships all throughout his life. They're all dubbed the Battle Frankies. And he's like, Battle Frankie 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We don't get to see all of them. We get to see Battle Frankie 8. We get to see the ninth one. Uh, and all throughout his his uh, 
adolescence and his teenage years and his adulthood, he's creating all of these these war machines basically to fight against uh, uh, Sea Kings. Eventually, when he creates Battle Frankie 35, that's the first successful model that does manage to actually take down a Sea King. And then all models after that will also include taking down a Sea King. Of course, Frankie begins to model himself as a Battle Frankie after um, he converts himself to a cyborg, but we're not quite there yet. Tom had a little bit of a problem. See, Tom was the guy that Roger enlisted to help build his ship, the Oro Jackson, the ship of the Pirate King himself. So Tom, he did it with a dawn. That's his signature catchphrase. You know, I'll build you a ship, Roger. So he builds him one of the best goddamn ships ever you ever laid your eyes on, which is still, by the way, out there in the world somewhere. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be part of, like, I don't know, the One Piece swag. Like, they open a giant door to see all the One Piece treasure or whatever, and the Oro Jackson is just there, like, moored on the side of, like, an enclosed, like, dock. Like, it's maybe it's... I'm assuming the One Piece is in, like, a giant cave. That's the way I'm picturing this. I'm picturing, like, there's a giant indoor... There's a giant cavern on Raftal, and the Straw Hats are gonna open this giant door, and that's where gonna be all the treasure, and then you're gonna see the Oro Jackson on the side, and all the other... I mean, it's, it's not gonna be just treasure. It's gonna be other stuff, but it's gonna be included in that. Whatever. Anyway, you get a free ship! Um, but because he built the Pirate King ship, of course, after the events of uh, Roger's capture, after he turns himself in, after he gets executed, the Marines were very particular about this. They wanted to make sure that anybody that helped Roger, anybody that had a connection with Roger, especially anybody that was related to Roger, they had to pay the price. They had to make sure they, they showed the world what we do to people like this. We cannot spare this guy's family or acquaintances any uh, we can't give them any leniency, basically. So, they uh, they sent a team of judges, like a judiciary ship, out to Water 7. They confronted Tom about this, the judge. Uh, the judge was actually a fairly just guy, remarkably, in the One Piece universe, I know. Uh, he was a pretty nice guy, and fr and uh, Tom explained to him why he did it. You know, he built the... He, he doesn't even deny it. He's like, he says, I did indeed build Roger's ship. Um, you know, he doesn't deny it. He's very proud of it, actually. But he also presents another plan. He says, the city of Water 7 is dying, and I have a plan to fix it. I'm gonna build... Stay with me on this, Judge. I'm gonna build a fucking train that runs on the ocean. Judge is like, okay, you're brave. You, if you could do it in 10 years, you're granted full pardon. Yeah, there you go. So that's basically how it goes. It's like, if you're, we're going to build a sea train, it's going to connect all these islands. It's going to connect Water 7 to, to like the Gourmet Island, you know, Poochie. It's going to connect it to Eni's Lobby. It's going to be great. It's going to be huge. And I could get this shit done. So the judge is like, all right, if you can manage this project, I will, I will give you a full pardon for your deeds. So, uh, Frankie and Iceberg and Kokoro and, uh, Yokozuna, who's this giant frog that sumo wrestles, and Tom himself, they all get to work working on this thing. Meanwhile, Frankie is in the middle of creating all of his battle Frankies. Iceberg's always a little bit pissed off, like, what are you doing screwing all around? We're trying to save the, we're trying to save the entire island here, and you're off making fucking battleships. You know, Tom's perspective on it was the same as he did everything else in life. Tom's perspective of it was, you know what, at least he's doing it with gusto. He's doing it with a dawn. He's doing it because that's what he wants to do. So just let him be. Let him do his... Let him fulfill his passion, you know? Um, which eventually Frankie does succeed with this. Um, and so they live out their days in Water 7. This is probably like the happiest time. They're working as a family or whatever. Eventually the, the sea train, the Puffing Tom, is completed. It, it carries all of the promises that Tom told. It, it connects all these islands. It brings, uh, you know, traffic and tourism and all this revenue to Water 7. It saves the city. And uh, the way that he was granted the pardon, though, was a little weird. See, in the meantime, while all this is going on, you have uh, CP5, led by Spondum, getting involved. Now, Spondum, in his younger years, you know, he was... Uh, Oh, wait, no, he's the same as he is now. He's still a cowardly piece of shit. <laughs> cowardly piece of dog shit. That spawned him. Um, and so he was trying to get his hands on the blueprints to Pluton. For those of you that don't know, and I made a video about this, check that out there. Pluton is a war world-destroying, like, apocalypse-bringing battleship. The Probably the biggest battleship in existence. Just it, it, the, the way that Crocodile talked about this thing is it can just poof, obliterate an entire island with just with one shot. This thing is, is the... the the vassal of death, okay? And obviously, the world government would want to get their hands on that thing because uh, having the ability to just nuke any island you want, 
pretty handy for the ultimate world government to have. So Spondum was trying to get the blueprints from Tom. Uh, Pluton was apparently constructed in Water 7, e, uh, you know, like hundreds of years ago, probably during the Void Century. And the thing that happened was the people that constructed it, the shipwrights of Water 7, they kept the, blupl uh, the blueprints of Pluton around because they figured that if some dickhead like Spondum or the world government ever got their hands on the damn thing, they would have a way to create another weapon that would be able to stop it. So that's the whole point why the, the, the shipwrights of Water 7 passed down these blueprints to Pluton generation to generation, eventually arriving on Tom's lap. So Spondum knew he had it. Um, and he kept trying to get it from him, but Tom just wasn't budging. He wasn't going to give them this fucking world-destroying super weapon. So, eventually, Spondum hatched an idea. He set it up where, um, he sent his own men to commandeer and steal Frankie's Battle Frankie devices, all the ships that he built all throughout the years, and they just obliterated Water 7. They just attacked the city. They attacked all these ships, and, um, of course, Frankie was pinned for the crime, and uh, what Tom ended up doing is he ended up taking he accepted all responsibility for this and the way that he received this pardon was weird it's like you are given a pardon to whatever crime you choose that's weird they don't say you are pardoned for the crime of 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 building the pirate king ship it's like they give him a get out of jail free card instead like you can you can be pardoned for one crime now that's the that's the reward for finishing the sea train so of course you can see what's going to happen here uh, tom ends up taking the rap for um spondum's act of destroying the city he uses his get out of jail free card to pardon himself for those crimes however the crimes for him helping roger out they still stand and the last time we see tom he gets carried away in the puffing tom the the sea train that he himself helped to create um and so we don't really know though what happened to tom we assume he was executed but we never get to see that we never see him get executed we never see him in a place like impel down we never see him at any's lobby we don't know what really happened to tom i would assume he's dead because they talk about him like he's most assuredly dead. I'm just saying we never actually saw what happened to him after he got on the sea train. Uh, Frankie being distraught after what happens. He jumps out on the tracks of the sea train. He tries to stop it. Obviously, you know, a 20-something, you know, skinny kid wearing a Speedo is not going to be able to stop a giant, uh, you know, roaring piece of uh, metal heading right towards you. Frankie, though, is a baller. He tries. He tries to grab the thing. He just gets slammed into the fucking thing, gets sent spiraling away like a Looney Tunes character and lands in the water like, oh, uh. and um, he would have died. Frankie would have been dead right there. Um... Hold on, I need a I need to take a drink before I explain this shit. Mm. Ah, damn it! Look, they expect us to believe a lot of shit in manga and anime, guys. They expect us to believe a lot of shit, and you know, a lot of times, suspension of disbelief. I'm fine with 99% of it. No, I'm not. I'm a nitpicking bastard. Okay, I'm fine with a lot of it, but. Frankie's Frankie's explanation on how he became a, a, a state-of-the-art cyborg with that that runs on goddamn soda and has um, weapons all built throughout his body uh, it, 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 it really defies all logic all right so here's the deal Frankie washes ashore on a place outside of Water 7 called Scrap Island. As the name implies, this is where all the scrap metal and the wrecked ships and I guess the failed ships that, you know, they, they couldn't be constructed, something happened. Everything just gets chucked on this island. It's a junkyard, basically. Frankie washes ashore on a junkyard. And then using nothing but the just unsterilized rust filled tetanus scrap metal on that island while he was severely injured mind you while he was brutally just mangled bleeding out probably lo losing a massive quantity of blood Frankie just lands on this island like my body's failing me oh, I need to need to build myself better stronger picks up scraps of metal and just 
starts hammering them into his fucking body. Just, uh, I, I think I'll replace my skin with steel. Uh... Ah, just, just sticking shit in. I don't know how the fuck he pulled this off. No anesthetic. He did this by himself, for God's sake. Oh my God, Frankie has to be okay. Frankie is a doctor. Okay, just step one before we move into any uh, any else of this. He has to have extensive knowledge of the human anatomy for this to even be closely resembling feasible. You know, you just can't take metal and being an engineer doesn't mean like, oh, I just instantly know how to remodel my entire body. Like, I don't know anything about the stomach, but I do know how to build a fridge. Okay, well, I'll just build a fridge for my stomach. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit, it's fucking crazy. Have you ever actually thought about this? Oh, and some people have said to me, some people have said to me, well, maybe he didn't do every single alteration at that moment, Techie. Maybe it was more like a, like a Tony Stark-like thing. You know how Tony Stark was, uh, you know, in the first movie, you know, he got obliterated, he, he got damaged in that big explosion, right? So the doctor performed like a quick surgery that he installed like an electromagnet in his heart. And he did that opera. It was in a cave. It was all like limited light sources and probably unsterilized. Got to be worried of infection, but just installed an electromagnet in Tony's heart so to keep the the shrapnel away from it. You know, that's what they did. Maybe maybe Frankie just did some quick thing. That still doesn't make any sense though. That do because we're not talking about just building one thing. We're talking about like my entire body was mangled so. Just using nothing more than unsterilized scrap metal, I repaired myself. Better, stronger, Frankie! <laughs> oh man, you know what? You can either spend your days sitting there and just being like, this doesn't make any fucking sense, or you could spend your days sitting there and like, that is why he's awesome. <laughs> that is why he's incredible. That's his origin story. Holy shit. All right, so he rebuilds himself as a cyborg. He sets himself up as a, uh, you know, cut, you know, Cutty Flam is believed to be dead, and he must let the world think that he is dead until he finds a way to sta satiate the wild beast that dwells inside him. I don't know, like an Incredible. We already threw in an Iron Man reference. Why not an Incredible Hulk reference, right? Um... So he sets himself up as the underworld ruler of Water 7. He founds the Frankie house. He takes in all of the rapscallions, all of the orphans, all of the destitute people in Water 7. Sets them up as like his loyal followers. Frankie's a weird guy. He's also very loyal and he takes care of his fucking people. You know, he sets up a place called the Frankie house on the outskirts of Water 7 and he serves as a as a as a scrap guy. You know, he takes it like a he not a salvager but a dismantler. He dismantles ships and sells them on the black market and shit. Like, he's an underworld dealer. He's part of that world. Um, Frankie, along with Robin, was one of the, you know, Straw Hats introduced that was an enemy at first. Right, so... Um, after the events of this, after, you know, Tom gets taken away, uh, Cuddy Flam's believed to be dead. I don't know why they don't, nobody in the city seems to connect the dots. Like, oh, there was a guy that worked with Tom that had crazy blue hair, and now there's this guy named Frankie who has crazy blue hair. Must be no relation. Um, <laughs> so, he lives his life like that. Iceberg eventually becomes the mayor of Water 7. Kokoro mans this way station. Time passes. Um, oh, one more thing before we get to the present storyline. Frankie is the guy responsible for fucking up Spondum's face. He takes a rifle, the butt of a rifle and just slams it right into Spondum's nose. And that's resulting in, in him wearing that freaky like n like head brace thing. That's the reason why. That's Frankie's doing. Um, so eventually, present storyline kicks in. Straw Hats arrive at Water 7. They need a new ship. The Mary is on her last leg. Um, so they, they cash in all the gold they got from Skypea. Usopp has, is in charge of the money. I don't know why they, they did that, but okay. Usopp's in charge of watching the money. It gets stolen by the Frankie family. Usopp goes to the Frankie house, tries to get it back. Frankie's there, beats the ever-loving shit out of Usopp. Um, Frankie then goes and takes the money and goes to another island to try to purchase this uh, rare item, this atom wood that he was wanting to purchase. And while he's gone, that's when Luffy and, and Zoro and Sanji and Chopper show up at the Frankie house to just level the place and just wipe out all the family members. Frankie shows up. He's right 
rightfully pissed about this, and now he's got a vendetta out for Luffy. Um, so the first time that he meets Luffy, you know, Luffy and Nami are in Water 7 riding around on a Yagura, and then at the same time, all the uh, the Water 7 uh, shipwrights want Luffy dead because they think he they, they shot uh, Iceberg uh, the previous night, and then all of a sudden Frankie shows up and he wants Luffy dead for wrecking his house, so all of a sudden everyone just wants to fuck, uh, fuck up Luffy. Um, Frankie shows up, you know, he's doing the dance number with Mozu and Kiwi, the Square Sisters, you know, you get really get a feel for who he is at first, everyone's freaking out, like, oh my god, not Frankie, put some pants on, you blue devil, someone please think of the children, oh, they're all running around, Frankie shows up, and honestly, Frankie feels kind of ignored, because the shipwrights of Pure of Doc 1 are, like, after Luffy, and, and Frankie's like, oh, screw you, I'm after Luffy, so he sets up a coup de vent, his strongest move at the time, he launches this huge volley of just compressed air, and just wrecks an entire, like, crane, like a giant crane used to build, like, galleons and shit, Frankie just wrecks it, and there's this huge explosion that's, like, in the ensuing chaos, everybody gets separated, but we get to see just how strong Wrong this guy is. Um, he eventually finds Usopp and he takes him into this, you know, sequestered little place. Usopp and Frankie have a little bit of a bonding moment there when Usopp tells him how much the uh, the Going Merry means to him and everything. Uh, CP9 shows up. They capture both of them. They capture Frankie for being, you know, an apprentice of Tom and everything, and also probably because he'll 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 know where the blueprints to Pluton is. And they capture Usopp just for basically being a whiny little bitch. Um, they take him on the tr same sea train as you have Robin, the puffing Tom. They're headed to Eni's lobby, Luffy and the gang and the Frankie family and the Dock One workers, they all work together to form an alliance to get them back. Uh, while on the sea train ride to Eni's lobby, we get to see a little bit more about Frankie's cyborg body, all the shit he can do. He fights against Nero, like a new recruit of CP9 fights against him. We get to see that he can breathe fucking fire, he can spit nails, he can like, you know, he has uh, weapons left, he can shoot bullets out of his arms, um, and he can refuel, the, his power source is, is cola. Now, I don't know how that works. How the hell you convert fuck? Ooh, it's cool on my tummy. I don't know how you convert fucking carbonation to a power source, let alone a power source strong enough to generate giant balls of fire and shoot, like, high-velocity projectiles. I don't know how the hell you convert um, a carbonated beverage into that, but like I said, Frankie genius. Oda also took a lot of references from the Terminator to put into Frankie, because come on now, how could you not see it? Like, there's a little bit of Arnold in there. I, I would totally understand if, like, the, the, the cola is just a cover story, and in reality, it's uh, Frankie's running on, I am powered by two nuclear fuel cells, you know? like He just, like, actually, it's nuclear power. That's really what makes me so strong. The cola is just, like, the thing that just fucking kicks it into action. But we know, we know it's cola because he's run out of cola before and he can't, he can't, he can't like shoot bullets or anything like that. He's, he's weak. He's, he's, he's useless. Another weakness that Frankie has is because he did all of the operations on himself, uh, he couldn't reach his back. So if Frankie is struck from behind, it's like his back is still normal flesh and blood. He could still get injured that way. Although there is a move Frankie has in his arsenal that makes this weakness completely irrelevant and allows him to become 100% perfectly invincible. You want ready for this? He lays down on his back. Holy shit! You can't, you can't, there's no way you can counter that. There's zero chance of you defeating Frankie when he's in his invincible state. That's why Frankie doesn't use it very often. He knows that it'd be unfair to anybody he fights against, and he doesn't do this, he doesn't fight dirty, okay? Well, maybe a little bit, but you know what I mean. He doesn't fight dirty. Anyway... The, the, the group arrives in Annie's lobby. Frankie has a big connection with Robin while at Annie's lobby. And, and by the way, this, I'm sorry, this video is scattershot to be on hell. I usually go and structure is like, let's talk about his relationships and shit. We're just doing this in just a cavalcade because I think that's the way Frank, Frankie doesn't plan shit out. Frankie just gets on the freaking wagon, you know? He just, he just goes for it with gusto. Okay. So, uh, while at Annie's lobby, Frankie seems to have a connection with, with Robin a little bit. Uh, I, I think because of their past you know, they both had somebody taken away from them. They both kind of got screwed over by the world government. So Frankie and Robin have a little bit of a connection there. Uh, maybe that relationship was ruined a little bit whenever uh, Robin straight up groped Frankie's nutsack and then squeezed them like they were fresh fruits, which let me tell you something right there. Men don't forget it when they get their balls squeezed. 
All right, it's something that you, they just it, it it stays with you forever. Although there is a lot of cool fan fiction with uh, Frankie and Robin, I think because they're one of the they're like closest in age of the Straw Hats. You know, they're more of the adults. Every, every other member of the Straw Hats is either like a teenager or like in their early twenties, except for for Brooke, of course. Brooke is ninety, but then you have Frankie and Robin who are both like in their thirties, so they're around the same age. So a lot of people seem to ship Frankie and Robin together. It seems like well, yeah, Robin is this you know very uh, collected, cool smart woman and Frankie is this like very expressive pervert uh, but maybe they balance out together I, I don't know there's there's lots of it out there um, but they get to know each other there and they kind of become sympathetic to each other's plight there so much so that whenever the Straw Hats confront you know Robin and in the Robin has her big moment like I want to live you see Frankie there who's also moved and he pulls out the fucking blueprints to Pluton the one this is the one thing mind you the one thing that can save the world should the world government ever decide, uh, ever stumbles across the real thing. If, if some asshole ever finds Pluton, these are the only things that could save them. And he's straight up just like, I'm making a bet. I'm making a bet between the Straw Hats or uh, the world government. If they win, you don't have shit. If you win, then the world's over, I guess. But I'm willing to take that bet. And it just burns the fucking things uh, right there, right in front of Spawndom and CP9. And uh, there you go. That's that's how you have it there. So uh, Frankie, he realizes, you know, Tom, that's probably what you would have wanted me to do as well. Everything that he figures, you know, this is the right thing to do at the moment. So after that, everyone just gets knocked into the fucking Tower of Law and it's time to brawl, you know. You got Frankie versus Frukuro. Uh, the Owl dude, who's not the strongest of the CP9 members, but not the weakest either. You know, he's like ranked like, um, he's, he's like the second, like the third or fourth from the bottom, you know. Um, Frankie starts to run low on Cola right around the time he starts to confront him, though. Frankie's power source is on Cola. He can tell by his, uh, his hair. Whenever his hair starts to get a little bit, uh, uh, you know, limp, that's when he knows his Cola supply is running low. So, you have funny scenes where Chopper's throwing him, like, all these different kinds of, like, sodas and, and juices, like, here's, uh, here's vegetable juice and his hair turns into an onion and that's like yeah let's just do this fresh guys and then chopper throws him tea and then frankie's just all chill like yeah man this is eh, let's just let's just sit a spell partner we've been working in the fields all day and he's like damn it i only take cola all right i really want to see what else you can give him in the filler they gave him like dajong tea and see where that went i want to see what would happen if you gave frankie like like iced tea or, uh, you know, ginger ale or prune juice. Okay, now I don't want to see that one. But I just want to see all the different things like you could give Frankie and all of his different personalities that would arrive. All his different hairstyles that are, would arrive from it. Uh, refills on Kula, beats the shit out of Fukuro, and then uh, moves on to help out Luffy. He fights against Luchi for a little while. Uh... Gets the shit beat out of him. You know, he doesn't last very long against Luchi, although Luffy gives him time to move on. Uh, and eventually he ends up saving the day by uh, rescuing Robin and uh, helping her get a helping her get away from Spondum and the crew. Uh, and uh, eventually is part of the getaway whenever they get on the Going Merry. And then he uses his coup de vent to blast them off to safety. So, uh, Frankie really does come in in the clutch there, really handy. Um, you know, throughout the next few arcs, you know, Thriller Bark, he doesn't play a super critical role. Uh, he's there for support, like, they need to get across a, a steep gap in the, in the castle. It's like, I'll just build a guy's a bridge, it's cool. Um, he's very moved by the story of Brooke and Laboon, he's singing the song there and get the, on the guitar, he's, uh, he just pulls this guitar out of nowhere, he's very musically inclined, Frankie. And he's just, uh, he's just very emotional there, helps to fight against oars, he, you know, rigs this giant freezer, you know, tube up with Usopp, and they managed to freeze his, uh, Orz's, uh, 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 feet there, and so Luffy could attack him, uh, so he's support there, but Frankie, and then at the end of the arc, he repairs Brooke's ship, so that Lola and the other rolling pirates can escape Thriller Bark, but he doesn't play, like, a super, super critical role in, uh, in Thriller Bark. Uh, we get to Saba Ondi, you know, he meets Rayleigh, who is the man that has sailed on the Oro Jackson, so he's, a very, uh, very taken aback by that, uh, fighting against, uh, Kuma, he, you you know, is one of the more, I would say right after you have, you know, you have uh, Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, who are like the monster trio, I would say the next, you know, like physically strongest member of the crew would probably, would most likely be Frankie, uh, if you're not including Chopper in his monster form. I think if you're going to compare Chopper's heavy points to Frankie, I think maybe Frankie might be a little bit stronger because Frankie has like the entire arsenal, you know, on top of having physical strength, he's also got like rocket launchers and guns and flamethrowers and shit. So I would say if you're going to rank it just on, like, physical strength or physical ability,
ability. I would say, you know, it goes, you know, Luffy and then Zoro probably are they're kind of back and forth for first place. Sanji before them, and then you get Frankie. And Frankie really needs to learn hockey. All right, Frankie doesn't have a devil fruit. He's got a cyborg power. He doesn't need a devil fruit. Uh, Frankie even came out and dressed Rosark and said, I really would prefer to stay the ability to swim. Um, but that doesn't mean he can't learn hockey. That doesn't mean Frankie can just an armament hockey the fuck up out of his iron arms and just starts beating the shit out of everybody. So you need to do that, Oda. But yeah, physically, physically, uh, you know, he's he's very strong there. Uh, he fights against Kuma. He releases a coup de vent right against, I think it was the PX-1, and it just gets knocked away like a freaking pinball machine. It's like, this is the last thing I'm going to do. Might as well empty out all my cola reserves and do something. Uh, he gets sent flying by Kuma. He gets sent to the future land of Baljamore, which is unfortunately not really around anymore because Frankie sort of sets off a nuke. Uh, but, you know, that's just Frankie, man. It's just, it's just you, he's going to do what he does, all right? It's just, it happens. Happens. I don't blame you, Frankie. I don't blame you for setting off a giant explosion that probably wiped out thousands of lives. I'm not here to judge, okay? So, while on Baljamore, though, he finds the, the laboratory of Dr. Vegapunk, where the well, like, the esteemed great doctor of the Marines grew up. And he's, well, he's, I don't know, he's not really part of the Marines. He's part of, like, the world government. He's, like, their scientific mind. He goes in there, and he finds all these blueprints and everything, all the things that he was working on. He accidentally blows that up, though, so that's all lost to history. But under that is, like, a secret laboratory where he was developing all of his weapons and cyborg technology and his devil fruit abilities and all that shit. And so Frankie spent his two years there, uh, working in his, working in Vegapunk's laboratory, you know, figuring out how to, you know, increase his, uh, his own cyborg tactics, his abilities, as well as give him some new weapons like the Radical Beam, incorporating the PX laser into himself. Uh, so yeah, Frankie now has a, he shoots lasers, which is awesome. Um, yeah, and so after two years, he's completely remodeled himself as Battle Frankie 37, his previous form before the time skip, that was Battle Frankie 36. Uh, you know, stating that, yes, he can indeed take down Sea Kings now. Um, I remember when Frankie first showed up after the time skip, and not a lot of people were, not a lot of people liked his new design. I remember people kind of being, like, thumbs down, because it was such a radical change, you know. Nami's tits got bigger, and she wears less clothing, and her hair got longer. Usopp got a little bit more muscular, grew a goatee. Frankie, I mean, uh, Sanji just changed the eye around, grew a little bit more scruff. Uh, Zoro got more muscular. Robin's boobs also got bigger, but but everybody's design was pretty much the same. Then you get to Frankie, who's just like, whole new fucking creature, whole new being that has been created here, uh, which he refers to as Armored Me. Um, you know, in this new form, you know, he could change his hairstyle with each, you know, he presses uh, his nose, he could change his hairstyle, which is what Oda wants to do with each arc. We're going to give him a new hairstyle each arc, which is cool. Although I would like to see Frankie's original hairstyle show up every now and then, because I, I was a fan of that one. Um, on top of getting new weaponry, he also can now shoot a laser beam, which I guess is new weaponry, but it's, it's a very important dimension. Um, tank treads on his legs and everything like that. Um... But, you know, as Robin stated, like, you're now even more of a... You're more machine than man at this point, which is, is funny. But uh, he's still the same old Frankie. Although I wonder... Here, here's a question for you. How does Frankie change his shirts now? Here's a question for you. Because it seems like the shirt is, like, built underneath his arms. Like, can Frankie deattach his giant freaking shoulder pads and then changes his shirt and then, like... Tsh stats them back on. I don't know how that goes down. Did Frankie just legitimately rip off his actual arms and then just could reconstruct new ones? I, I don't know where that whole thing, that whole thing's kind of screwy there. Man. Um, but yeah, okay, so then we get into uh, Fishman Island, right? So they arrive at, at Fishman Island after they go through the whole process of coding their ship and everything. They arrive, they arrive at Fishman Island. He meets up with Tom's brother, Den, in the sea forest, who tells him all about, like, Fishman genetics and everything. Uh, tells him all about what happened with his brother and everything, so there's a little bit closure there. Uh, eventually, he helps aid the Straw Hats in defeating all of the new Fishman pirates. He unveils these new weapons of the Sunny. I'm gonna actually, I, I had to debate whether or not I'm gonna talk about the Thousand Sun in length in this video because Frankie's the one that built it and designed it or if we're going to do that when we get to like because I'm going to do it like a whole separate video on the Straw Hats ships and I think I'm going to do that on the ship video because I think this one's already going to be you know long enough already and uh, like talking about the Thousand Sunny that, that needs to be its own separate video but yeah he um he adds some new weapons to the Thousand Sunny he adds uh, a motorcycle called the FRU number four and then he adds the Brachio tank number five the Straw Hats have a fucking tank now guys this shit's just getting legit as, as the time progresses 
progresses. But then he makes the thing, he combines them together in the big, huge unveiling. Frankie now invented a freaking Megazord. I give to you the real reason this video was delayed so long because this damn thing took two months to ship here. The Battle Frankie 38. Frankie Shogun. So yeah, this is uh, this is Frankie's answer to uh, Voltron or a Megazord or or Gundam or whatever the fuck you Big O. That was a good one, you know. Um, yeah, it's 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 created with a substance called Wapple Metal, which is you remember is the substance that Wapple created using his Baku Baku powers. It's now mass produced in the world of One Piece. That's what made Wapple rich. Um, but Frankie doesn't know about the history with Wapple or anything, so he's just like, oh man, there's this guy in the South Blue with a Devil Fruit power just created this shape retaining memory alloy. All right, I'll build it, whatever. And so um, he creates uh, the Battle Frankie with this shape-retaining alloy. Uh, it has a sword on it. Uh, Frankie's not that good with swordsmanship, but he does have a sword now. That's cool. It's The funny thing about the Shogun is that it doesn't seem to have a lot of its own weapons. Like, he'll do, like, Shogun Fireball, but then he'll just open the hatch and then use his own Fireball. It's like, it, all it really does is add an extra layer of security and more physical strength, and, and that's all really it adds. It, it does have a weapon all of its own. He can take uh, the Gao Cannon that he gave to the Thousand Sunny. He can adapt that on land using the Battle Frankie, but that's like the only like unique technique that it uses. Otherwise, it's like Frankie's the one that pops out and does all the, like, Fireball! Cannon! You know, that's the shit that Frankie does. So he does that. Uh, what's next? We get the Punk Hazard. Punk Hazard where Frankie has his body swapped with Chopper. So we get some fun scenes there with Chopper and, and uh, you know, Frankie's expressions and shit. Robin tells him, just stop. Just stop what you're doing. Just stop, please. It's never make those faces again. Uh, eventually, he goes out with Luffy. For some reason, Chopper gives him a rumble ball. And he's like, only take one. Frankie takes it. Goes Monster Point. Can't control it. Uh, although he does end up being useful in the fight against the Yeti Cool Brothers, so that's kind of funny. But he just goes monster point because he can't control that and every and all shit. But he, he's super, so that's all that matters, I suppose. And then you get to the end of the arc where he confronts uh, Baby Five and uh, Buffalo. That's where he busts out all the like. Uh, we see, you know, he tanks like a missile launch from Baby Five, and the battle Frankie holds up just fine. So this thing is built pretty damn sturdy. That's when Frankie breaks out the Gao Cannon, the, the General Cannon, or whatever it was called, and then launches it at them uh, to show its true true capabilities. There. Um, afterwards, we get to dress Rosa, where Frankie has his manly. Cause this is like the last major fight he's had in the story. Uh, his manly fight with Senor Pink. And uh, th this fight is basically just consisting of... Frankie doesn't really bust out a lot of weapons in this fight. He's really just... Because it's a mono-on-mono -mono fight. He's a hard-boiled man, and they just start beating the shit out of each other. You know, Frankie's this perverted guy that goes around wearing a Speedo. Senor Pink's this guy that goes around wearing a baby bonnet and a diaper. There was a connection here that the likes of you and me can never truly understand. Imagine... Imagine you go your entire life wearing a hedgehog on your head and everyone's looking at you your entire fucking life this is you crazy hedgehog on his head guy and nobody everyone always looks at you like you'll never fit in you're a weirdo you'll never ever find anybody that can even resemble someone like you crazy guy going around wearing a hedgehog on his head but then one day you turn a corner and you see another human being wearing a hedgehog on their head. We, we just we won't be able to understand. We we just can't understand. But that was that was a personal fight. That was a fight. Like I have to beat you because that's what our captain that's what my captain ordered. That's what your that's what Doflamingo ordered you to do, but we're doing this mono on mono and they're just beating the shit out of each other, making sure the civilians don't get caught in it, because that's not cool. Um, eventually it all comes down to a final attack. Uh, Senor Pink says, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release my strongest move on you, and if you survive it, man, you get a free shot on me. Frankie's like, game fucking on. Not my smartest move, but game fucking on. So, he just, br I'm doing the whole, I, I'm doing, uh, whatever, I'm, uh, we're doing it, I don't care. I got soda all over my desk, it's on my keyboard, I'm gonna have to buy a new keyboard now, shit, I don't care. We're doing it. Goes up the air, baby buster, and then just slams him into the ground. Frankie, you know, you get back up, 
He's like, all right, you showed me yours. Now I'll show you mine. And he breaks out iron boxing and just unloads on him. Senor Pink, true man, just sits there, crosses his arms. He's like, well, I'm just shit i'm taking it and then just slams into him frankie eventually comes out on top he's all his left side of his face is just scarred out you see like the little terminator eye like is like you have been dominated but no in reality he wants to hear more about Lu uh russian uh the uh, uh senor pink's wife that we have the very emotional flashback about uh so he's like next time we meet brother maybe we could have a drink together and you could tell me about this lucian person so you know, Frankie is still, he's still a man's man, you know? So, uh, that's, that's Dressrosa. He accompanies the gang to, uh, Zoe. Doesn't really do a lot of stuff there, though. Uh, and now he's going to Wano with the crew. He's, he's, uh, with Zoro and Kanemon and Law. They're all in Wano Kuni at the moment. Uh, so we're probably gonna meet back up to them very shortly. And uh, I hope to see some action from Frankie in Wano Kuni. All right. So the last thing before we go is we need to discuss Frankie's magnificent, perfect, modified body. His his equipment. All right, all right. Uh, man, I should have uploaded this video on Pornhub. Okay, so Frankie's initial abilities that we see him use pretty much all the time is, uh, first off, his, uh, his arms. You know, the ways he's modified his arms. So his arms are weapons left. He has a Gatling gun uh, installed in his left arm. Like He can like lift up his wrist and he shoots out bullets. Uh, he can also flip back his finger and he can shoot it like a pistol called Ouch Finger. Uh, his right arm arm can detach with a chain like a great he can use it as like a grappling hook to grab onto things or he could use it as uh as a punch you know a rocket punch basically like you know like strong right and then he shoots out his arm like a chain and it slams into the target um strong hammer is where he just uh he t see frankie's skin is synthetic so he can like remove the skin and then he can like punch his opponent with it um and so that's an ability he has uh with uh his uh mouth his face he's modified it he could spit out fireballs or nails uh to you know attack his opponent with uh his uh sideburns are even weaponized his sideburns are uh, razor blades so he can shoot them at his opponent that's frankie triangle jacker like i said his hair is a measure of you know it's a gauge for his uh, cola reserves uh and his chest there his uh shoulders are actually like um are cannons like miniature your cannons that he has to he has to dislocate his shoulders and then run around uh he calls them tracer bullets at first like oh these these are bullets that trace the target and chopper's all amazed by this like whoa really they're like heat seeking real reality is frankie just dislocates his shoulders then runs around chasing after the target so whatever um Something else that he can do uh, is that he can... Uh, wait, 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 no, there's definitely more stuff he can do in his original time skip. Oh, yeah, Frankie Destroyer Ho. That's what it was. This is the, the, the method that he uses to actually take out um, a, a Sea King, where he runs a giant shells, like a like a shell from, like, a cannon, runs it through his arm, like, like a, you know, like a, like a Browning, like, rifle or like an automatic gun. You know what I mean? Like the long strings of ammo. And then he could shoot them out like that. And then that that's the weapon that can take down a sea king he also has weapons left which is like uh, he pulls up his left arm and it like clicks open at the wrist revealing like a barrel you know for a for a large cannon and he could shoot out like a single i think a single round there or he could attach more of it to his arm to relay more attacks but i think he has like just one in the barrel at all times to shoot it out so that that's pretty much all he could do before the time skip after the time skip after he develops armored me he really just decks his whole body out you know uh he's got rocket launchers in his shoulders he's got cannons here He's got uh, a toolbox on his arm so that he can open it up and he can perform like his uh, engineering duties whenever. Uh, he has like little tiny arms that come out of his big arms because he's a he's a craftsman, you know. So he has to you know perform very delicate work, like detailing work and everything. Uh, probably his most impressive ability is his nipple light. I'm not gonna do it again, uh, but his nipple lights, you know. So he shoots out flashlights from there. Uh, Coup de boo. I can't believe I forgot about this. He has this before the time skip, too. Maybe because I didn't want to think about it. Uh, he can inflate his ass, and then he could shoot forward using his uh, his cola reserves, but he basically farts. Uh, he ejects all the cola energy through his ass, and he could propel himself forward. Very handily used when he was chained up, and he couldn't move his arms, or when he was underwater to propel himself forward. So, pretty cool. Uh, coup de vent, which is an ability that he uses. Uh, he has to use both hands to do it, and he has to have, like, a special, like, connector device, like he's a fucking, like, action figure. Like, Frankie, Battle Frankie 36, now with the connector piece, you know? So he has to attach 
attach this thing to his arm, and then he can, like, shoot out a huge ball of compressed air. After the time skip, he converts this to just one arm, so he could just raise up one arm, and then just, it expands, it, it sucks in air, and then it shoots it out. Uh, Frankie Radical Beam, of course, is uh, the Pacifista's laser. He needs both arms to charge and fire it, does his arms like this, charges the beam up, and then shoots it. Um... Frankie Fireball is sort of the upgraded version of uh, Frank of Fresh Fire, where he just shoots out a larger fireball from his mouth. Um, yeah, he can change his hairstyle, like I said, hold his nose down, and he could just change into whatever crazy hairstyle he wants. Battle hair, whale hair, dreads, uh, you know, uh, buzz cut, you know, whatever he wants, he could he could have it. It's crazy. Uh, the MC Hammer shit, I whatever he wants. That's Frankie, man. Um, but yeah, a mohawk. I'm just uh, the rest of this video is just me naming fucking hairstyles that Frankie has gone through. Uh, he could convert his legs into treads, like tank treads, like very similar to honestly Beige, how he does it with his Shiro Shironomi to move around. Uh, and I'm sure there's plenty of more things in Frankie's bag. I'm sure he's always improving himself. Although the weakness of his back is still an issue. You'd think at one point Frankie would be like, "Hey, can you just can I get somebody to just install a metal sheet on my back so I don't have to worry about getting shot?" You know. Um. So yeah. Uh. But his his face, man, his eyes, like his eyes apparently are all robotic, at least his one eye is. It's it's purely robotic at this point. Um, so he really is a master engineer and a master with human anatomy at something, because that's the only way that shit would go down. Um, you wonder really how much man he is at this point. He obviously still has his brain, uh, but his balls, on the other hand, yeah, his balls. I, I, I seem to have glossed over that, so I guess that'll be the last thing we talk about here is um, Frankie's nuts. See, um, in order... <laughs> Luffy wanted Frankie to join the Straw Hats. Frankie was, you know, he didn't want to do it because he wanted to stay there with his, his family, but he has a bounty out on his head. So he wanted to go. He's trying to escape. They steal his Speedo. So he's running all through Water 7 with his, his nuts hanging, his, his dingleberries hanging out. Uh, but like I said, Frankie is a pervert at heart. He knows... He knows that it's okay, so he just, what's he do? He turns around, and everyone's like, oh my god, cover up! And he's like, this is, behold my family jewels, you know, like, super! And he just does it, wave crashes behind him. Um, so that's, that's how he did it, you know, that's Frankie right there in a nutshell. Uh, and, and especially nutshell, because he still wouldn't join. So Robin just decided enough with this shit, and then just used her Devil Fruit ability to spawn her arms in between Frankie's legs, grab his nuts, and just... And, um, Frankie joined. Frankie joined the Straw Hats on that day. Uh, but I assume every moment after that, whenever Frankie and Robin were alone, like if they're ever in the Thousand Sunny and they're like, I don't know, just, they just bump into each other in the hallway or something, they just kind of look at each other. It hurts. I know. I know. But, uh, hey, 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 he, he gets along with her okay, but I feel like there needs to be still a little... He's either, he either holds a grudge about that, or it does legitimately, like, the time you squeezed my nuts, no woman's ever done that to me before. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what route Frankie's taking it, but that's him. Holy shit. Um, I can't, I can't believe how long I've been talking about this, uh, but... That's, um, that's Frankie. I think I covered all of his relationships at this, because this is the eighth video in this series we've done, and we're almost done with this. So I feel like I've covered every other, like, if you want to hear about my opinion on, like, Luffy's take on Frankie, or, you know, Zoro's take on Frankie, I would say just go watch the other videos. Um, you know, because I think I covered all of that more than once before that. Um... I would say on the ship, Frankie has the most relationship with Usopp because they're both like, they, you know, Usopp's not an official ship writer and engineer, but I'm sure Frankie's now teaching him some things about it. So Usopp's a little bit more, you know, mechanically inclined than he was due to Frankie. Uh, when I do the discussion on the Thousand Sunny, I'm of course going to mention all the shit about Frankie and how what how he installed the everything on the Thousand Sunny, all like the soldier dock system and everything like that. Um... But you know what? I think that's good. Uh, he's going to be probably showing up uh, pretty soon at the end. Well, maybe I, I hear Wano's going to happen in October. So I think we're probably going to start seeing him around there. So maybe right in time for Halloween, Frankie's going to be making a new appearance. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for putting up with my my weirdness for all, as, long as, I, as long as you have. My cringiness. I don't know. How come Frankie's just weird and I'm cringy? How come? Where's the gap there? You know? But whatever, Frankie, 
You keep on being you. You guys keep on being awesome. I gotta clean up a shit ton of fucking soda that is just now all over my desk. My hand is just sticky as hell. But you know what? It was worth it. You guys have a super day. Signing out.